Well, lots of people live together uh, with a group of friends when they're students, but what about doing it a little later in life? For four ladies from Port Perry, Ontario, they're being called the real-life golden girls because they decide to share ownership of a newly renovated house together. Louise Bartswich, Beverly Brown, Martha Casson, and Sandy McCulley join me now in studio. All right, we're going to start. Get this out of the way, Louise. If you threw a party and invited everyone you knew, would the biggest gifts be from these three ladies? And would the card attached say, thank you for being a friend? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> How did the idea of joint ownership of a home come? Don't, don't say it was the sitcom from the 80s. No, no, it, it definitely wasn't, really. It, it started quite a, a number of years ago, and it was around the time that my, my mom moved to a retirement home in, in Port Perry. And Martha and I were friends at that point. She was living with her mom. And when my mom went into the retirement home, much as it was very good for her, I knew it was not for me. And then very quickly did the calculations and figured out, you know, if it was 3,500 for her, by the time I needed it, it was way out of, way out of line. So we started looking around for alternatives and fairly quickly came up with the idea of living to, uh, together. It was inspired in part by the Abbey Field homes. We, okay. we visited a few of those around Ontario and uh, just started realizing, wow, there's, there's a, a, a huge saving in staying together. Um, you know, compared to living alone, plus, of course, the obvious, uh, you know, just having someone to make sure the cat isn't eating your face when you fall down. <laughs> and, uh, and, and uh, you know, the social, just not being lonely. But, but how do you find four like-minded individuals to join in on what's a risky endeavor, I think, to buy a house, live together in close quarters? That can, that can change a dynamic pretty quick. So how, how, how did the four of you get together on this plan? <laughs> It was surprisingly difficult to find people who were willing to do it. Lots of people say it's a, it's a very cool idea and I'm interested, but... Sandy, you, you were the last? Is that I correct? was the last. You were the last. So yeah. were you, is it because you were reticent to join in or what was oh, it? Oh, no, no. no. Uh, my husband had passed away and I spent three months trying to find a place to live and couldn't. So uh, Bev and I had talked before. We're both nurses and uh, retired, I mean. <laughs> and um, so I told her, I said, I couldn't find a place. Was there room in the inn? <laughs> and, and she said, yes. As a matter of fact, there's one more spot. So that's how I got in. What was the magic number four? You needed four women to it make it work? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Yes, it was. Um, just, we, we talked to a lot of people. And uh, it, probably interviewing unbeknownst to the people we were talking to, to see if we were, had like-minded values and how we'd get along. And, and some we knew we couldn't manage to live with. And then we just kind of happened to fall together. It was great. Now, when you move in, how do you decide who's going to bring the kitchen supplies, who's bringing the TV, <laughs> oh. who's bringing the couch? How, there's a lot that goes into living together. Oh, yeah. yeah. There is, yeah. Four dining room tables. Yes. So how did you what decide? What do you do? So we actually staggered our move. First of all, we all downsized to a degree, and some of us had moved a couple of times, and others just like Sandy, just fairly recently. Um, but we ended up moving, getting rid of a lot of stuff, and then moving our things in. And when we had duplicates, we picked the best, and then we picked a second. So we have two Keurigs. <laughs> um, but we, we did have 24 spatulas, for example. There you go. So we, we, yeah. we had some very funny times as we were sorting things out, and we donated things, and we called our family back and said, you know, you must take some things. And we also um, ended up buying furniture um, together for the common spaces so that we weren't putting anybody's um, furniture in and trying to mix and match things that didn't work. So, so Bev, there are a lot of people watching uh, at home right now. What do you tell them if, if, they're, if they're considering this as an option as, as opposed to, say, a retirement home? What are the benefits and what are the things to, what are the red flags that you've got to pay attention to to avoid pitfalls? Well, I think one of the biggest benefits is just the shared expenses. Everything that I was paying for in my own house on my own now is split by four. And um, I think some of the pitfalls, uh, I think you have to have like-minded personalities to start with, and we have to be very cognizant of each other's feelings. We can't have things fester, you know, if there's a disagreement or, you know, something bugs you. We, we've got it, we've decided we just get it out there. Do you have set meetings? Like once well, a week meetings uh, or something not, like that? Not set, but we do um, write down a list of the things that 
are bugging us or, <laughs> or need to be addressed. Sure. And, uh, and then we, we get together when we're all yeah, it's usually over a glass of wine at supper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Take off the edge of the glass of wine. What, but did you did you meet with a lawyer beforehand to, oh, to, yes, to iron yes. out any uh, potential uh, pitfalls? We have a very comprehensive legal agreement. Um, it, there, how do you get in? How do you get out? What? Who gets voted off the island if you're a danger to yourself or others? Yeah. There are all of those kinds of things. And then there's a separate schedule that we put in of the sort of rules of the house, pretty yeah. much. And, you can't and we, have a garage sale. You can't leave your that's, three wrecks in the driveway. What know, happens if one of you has a date? That's Fine. covered, too. Is it covered? Yeah, Can you it. share the politics of that with us? <laughs> <laughs> what happens? We, we have talked about, you know, what would happen if, if well, I mean, a date is, is easy enough. You can certainly have overnight guests or, or, or whatever. Uh, we do have something in the agreement that limits the amount of the number of days because we don't want somebody moving in by accident. That's right. But, but you know, it could happen. We, we originally had a couple that was interested in coming in, and that would that would have worked, too. So if so somebody's depends partner... Depends on the person. Yes. Yeah. And if yeah. somebody's partner is a great gardener and a good cook. I mean, and. we'll certainly welcome them as <laughs> yeah. a couple now. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much for being here. This is a, a wonderful story to share. We really appreciate it. And uh, we hope you come back sometime.